Hi, our eighth theme is uh, instrumental variables, which is the classic uh, econometric solution to the endogeneity problem that we discussed as our previous theme. So I will start uh, by an uh, introductory example to, to build you some intuition of how the instrumental variables are used. So first to gain some intuition and also connect to the recent literature in, uh, and, uh, in economics, uh, I have here taken uh, two quotations, uh, uh, first by Michael Keane in Journal of Econometrics in uh, 2010, where he argues that the ideal instrument is a natural experiment that generates random assignment uh, or something that resembles it. Uh, so uh, recall that, uh, that uh, this uh, simultaneity problem uh, relates to the fact that, uh, that our um, our data are not uh, coming from some laboratory experiment, but rather the, there are some uh, uh, economic agents making some choices, uh, and this, uh, therefore these, uh, these uh, values of the X variable might be conditional on the realization of the, the random error term epsilon. So that's, that causes the endogeneity problem that the X is correlated with, uh, with epsilon. So that wouldn't be necessarily the case if we can control for this, uh, these X variables. Uh, so um, this has also led to many applied economists and applied econometricians to search for situations where where actually these x variables would be would be randomly assigned to the so so this is called uh, quasi experiments or natural experiments or or where this uh, where these x variables are not endogenously determined by the by the by the economic agents themselves but are rather uh, randomly assigned to the to the to these agents. I have also another quotation by Angrist and Gruger, who are among the pioneers of this uh, quasi-experiment approach. At least have made this very popular in labor economics, particularly. So they refer to this uh, kind of omitted variable bias that we that is also another another type of uh, endogeneity problem. So uh, they argue that uh, it can be reasonable to to. Uh, or it can be desirable to seek situations where it is reasonable to presume that omitted variables are uncorrelated with the variables of interest and uh, such situations may arise if the forces of nature or human institutions provide something close to random assignment meaning that it's like close to some kind of uh, um, controlled experiment so it's not really a controlled to laboratory experiment but something something that uh, for example, uh, some policy change or 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 some some similar, then uh, then situation is similar to a, to a to a natural experiment. So I want to also highlight, for the sake of um, fairness, that this um, this article of Michael Keane is actually quite critical about the quasi experiment approach. So so if you are interested in a, in the critical discussion of the of the experimental. And approach then then this Michael's Michael Keane's article would be would be highly recommended. So my own exper experience is also that uh, that um, there is a lot of uh, search for uh, for good instruments, uh, but it also makes the makes it uh, often the the situations more like a, a case study when you when you can find such kind of cases where there's conditions of uh, natural experiments hold. But uh, there are also many important applications where this kind of natural experiments are not available. And uh, this is also what, uh, what we are going to consider in this, uh, this particular course. So um, the question then arises that, okay, if it's not really laboratory experiment, it's not even a, a quasi-experiment, uh, then what could we do then? So as I mentioned, the, the instrumental variables are the, are the classic uh, Econometric solution to the to the endogeneity problem. So recall that the endogeneity problem in general uh, relates to the situation where the the explanatory variable x correlates with the error term epsilon. So um, the idea of the instrumental variable is then that we we should try to find some some variable that doesn't correlate with the error term epsilon, but it's anyway correlated with the with the explanatory variable x that uh, that we have in our model. So these are the two important conditions to, to keep in mind that what the, what the instrumental variable should be. 
So it can be any, any kind of variable which is here indicated by z that uh, doesn't correlate with, uh, with epsilon, not much at least, and uh, is, uh, is highly correlated with a variable that is endogenous. Okay. So an other, otherwise instrument can be anything, and it can be helpful to think about these three types of endogeneity when we are looking for the instrument. So what exactly is the problem in the first place can, can help to guide us also in, in looking for appropriate instruments. So here I have a couple of uh, examples other than this, uh, these quasi-experiments. Of course, uh, some kind of... Uh, uh, Quasi-experimental assignment could be could be indeed an ideal instrument, but if such is not available, then uh, uh, a situation that is often often considered in the case of measurement errors. So, if we have some some uh, measurement errors causing the endogeneity problem, then then uh, instrument could be another measurement or alternative measurement. Uh, and in this respect, then economists have often resorted to this kind of twin studies. For example, when there's a question of uh, returns to education, where the, where the question is, for example, that how does uh, um, years of schooling contribute to the, to the earnings later on? So uh, it could be that uh, when this uh, respondents to this kind of surveys uh, report how many years of schooling they have, uh, they might uh, remember wrongly or they might have forgotten some schooling that they received or they might exaggerate in their responses. So... Uh, uh, some researchers have used an, uh, uh, twin study, so they, they give this kind of uh, uh, survey to the both twins and they ask also that, okay, how many years of schooling you have, but then they ask also from their, from their twin brother or sister to report that, that how, the, how the other brother or sister has, uh, has uh, years of schooling. And then they use this uh, uh, brothers or sisters uh, reported uh, years of schooling as an alternative measure which is used then as an instrument to the to the to the x variable. So this would be a kind of intuitive um, example of uh, of an alternative measure of the same thing. Okay, so it should be measuring the same thing, but it's an alternative uh, alternative measurement. Uh, we will later consider time series and panel data models, where uh, particular in panel data, of course, the past values of the x variable could be could be instrument. So if we have a measurement in um, a measurement in year t, but we also have a measure the same thing in year t minus one, and and uh, these measures might have some kind of measurement error, then this previous measure t minus one uh, could be could be then uh, used as an instrument for the same measurement in period t. So so this would be examples in the in the when the when the problem is uh, more the measurement errors. And indeed, this quasi-experiment is is more more also also closely related to the to the simultaneity problem because uh, there this uh, in the simultaneity it is this endogeneity problem comes from the fact that uh, uh, economic agents are making making decisions uh, themselves rather than getting randomly assigned. And then of also there's this omitted variable bias uh, mentioned. So these examples refer more to the to the measurement errors. And indeed, uh, uh, when looking for appropriate instruments, and it's also good to keep in mind that what is causing the endogeneity, or what is supposed to cause the endogeneity in the first place. So let me give you an alternative example or, or, or an empirical example of uh, of a particular these measurement errors. And let's get now back to this our hedonic model of housing market that we have considered so far. So in this data set of ESPO housing market, we have also, also some information about uh, the condition of the apartment. Uh, so there is um, a self-reported evaluation with three, three levels, poor, satisfactory, and good. Uh, but I already mentioned that also this kind of uh, self-reported evaluation ha can have all, all sorts of biases that, uh, that uh, one person might think that the apartment is in, in a very poor condition, while other other person would see it as a satisfactory. So this could be then a, a source of a measurement error, which might cause some some bias in the in the uh, some endogeneity bias in the uh, econometric estimation. So um, just to, just for the sake of um, illustration, I have here uh, run a model with this. Uh, 
this uh, explaining the uh, sales price of the apartment uh, with this uh, some some location dummies size bedrooms and so on and now i just simply included this condition of apartment uh, with this one two three scale so earlier we used dummy variables but i just uh, had this uh, condition uh, condition as if it was a continuous variable of course it's a it's a discrete variable with three levels and uh, it's not necessarily that the improvement in condition from from level one to two is as large as uh, from two to three for example but anyway this is just to just to just to give you an illustration that okay uh, what if you model this condition and uh, and uh, it might be also also source of uh, source of a bias uh, let's also pay attention to how this uh, how this including this condition of apartment influences the uh, marginal value of the size in square meter so in this uh, this um, basic model we have uh, size in square meters 4590 euros per a square meter so the marginal effect of one one square meter would be about 4600 euros so what about the instrumental variable approach then so let's give you an, an illustrative example and and um, idea here is that uh, that uh, we could find try to find some instruments and uh, in our data we have also such kind of uh, kind of variables such as age then we have dummy variable if there is sauna in the apartment uh, if there's elevator in the building there is energy class and uh, and not all of these i have actually used in the in the previous uh, e equations but it could be argued that uh, that the condition of the apartment uh, is a function of the age of the apartment uh, uh, then the dummy variable for sauna could could actually be a um some kind of indicator for the or, or some kind of instrument for the for the for the condition namely because in older apartments uh, older apartments might have been renovated and often often in uh, uh in the renovations more recent renovations there might be also that uh, that uh, that they have built a sauna uh energy class can be also also something that correlates with the condition so all of these uh, uh, these variables such as uh, that I have mentioned here, they might be correlated with the condition of the apartment. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure in the in the first place, but uh, but uh, my, I'm just hypothesizing here that they might be correlated with the condition of the apartment, uh, but uh, they shouldn't be correlated with the self-reported measurement error in this in this condition. So there's no reason to expect that. Uh, presence of sauna somehow influences that uh, that will there be a, uh, some kind of bias in this self-reported uh, uh, condition okay so as the first step i will then use this kind of kind of instrumental variables to to predict the condition and i have also included in this uh, in this uh, uh, predicting the condition i've also used other other variables such as this uh, this size in square meters and so on so here's the results of this uh, auxiliary model so i try to predict the condition of the apartment so as the dependent variable i have just this uh, self-reported condition and i have here then included some uh, some this uh, uh, original explanatory variables and also this kind of uh, four variables that i consider here as instruments namely the age of apartment uh, dummy variable for sauna dummy variable for elevator and uh, the energy class so it turns out that the age of apartment has a significant negative impact on the on the on the on the quality so in in other words the the older the apartment in in a worse condition so that sounds intuitive uh, the dummy variable for sauna has positive uh, coefficient but uh, but it turns out to be not significant however the elevator dummy uh, has a significant and positive effect so as you see uh, it doesn't have to be the case that these instruments that we use are are necessarily uh, significant. Uh, we can just uh, just include variables that we think that might be uh, correlated with the with the condition or whatever endogenous uh, regressor we have, uh, but uh, it might turn out that they are not significant. Okay, and another point I want to mention that I also included all the exogenous regressors here. So size in square meters, bedrooms, and so on and so on. 
this is also important part of this kind of kind of technique. And uh, if you look at the R squared statistic, it's not very high. It is uh, 0.196. But anyway, this uh, this first stage auxiliary regression is anyway statistically significant. So at least we managed to explain the condition of apartment uh, to to some extent. Okay. So then, what do we do next? Then uh, we look at then uh, the residuals, and I have here particularly interested I'm in this predicted condition. So, so uh, from this first uh, first stage uh, auxiliary regression, we then get a prediction of uh, how good condition the apartment should be based on those observables. And uh, and here I have just for sake of illustration, I have taken first uh, fifteen observations in the data set. And uh, remember that this condition of apartment was uh, uh, a discrete variable, one, two, three. But the prediction doesn't have to be discrete. So these predictions here would be then somewhere between uh, one and three typically, but it could be also greater than three or less than, less than one. So this would be then the predicted condition. And uh, as the next step, then I will take this uh, predicted condition, I will save it as another variable, and then I will use this predicted condition in the original regression model uh, to 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 uh, to reflect the quality of the apartment. Okay, so I have saved this predicted condition. I take it as one of the explanatory variables in the regression model, and then as a second step, then I will explain the price as a function of predicted condition and other other original uh, explanatory variables of the of the model. So here's the results then for this, uh, this second stage regression. So notice now that the, the prediction predicted condition has quite a large marginal effect that uh, even uh, more than 200,000 euros per, per change in the so so moving from the from the poor quality to satisfactory would increase the value of apartment uh, by by more than 200,000 euros. And similarly, from moving from the satisfactory to good condition would also increase the value by uh, more than 230,000 euros. And uh, so this would be the idea of the, of the instrumental variable that, uh, especially in the case of measurement errors, that, uh, that uh, we would try to find some, some uh, variables that, uh, that can explain this uh, condition of apartment. And here the motivation was that uh, that this self-reported condition might be might be subject to a lot of measurement errors, and uh, we tried to find some instruments that uh, could correlate with the with the true condition of the apartment, and then we run uh, um, auxiliary regression model where we predicted the condition, and now when we used the predicted condition in the original regression model, then uh, we found much much higher impact on the on the price with the condition of the apartment. Uh, I also wanted to, to to pay attention to the to the marginal impact of the size in square meters. So in fact, it turns out to be not that uh, dramatically big impact on the on the on the. So so we here have uh, four thousand six hundred approximately approximately uh, per per square meter. So you can you can check how much it was in the original model, but it's not an enormously big impact. So mainly now this. Uh, measurement in error potential measurement error in the condition of apartment uh, uh, had a huge uh, downward bias on the impact of the of the condition and this we also remember that from the discussion of the of the measurement error so so indeed if there is a measurement errors in the in the condition of the apartment then the estimated marginal effect would be downward bias or it would be biased towards zero and uh, if the if we believe that these instrumental variables then could capture this kind of measurement error better, then this would explain that uh, that the marginal effect of uh, the predicted condition becomes much higher than that of the original condition variable. But um, this this uh, this is the simple illustration that how these uh, instrumental variables could be used. That uh, the instruments themselves do not enter this. Uh, Original regression equation, but rather they are used to uh, to to uh, 
um, address the problem in this kind of problematic uh, endogenous regressors. So here this uh, predicted condition uh, was formed, this prediction was formed based on these instruments. So again, these instruments, they do not enter the original regression equation, but, uh, but they are kind of uh, working behind the scenes in some sense, behind this predicted condition. So the prediction was formed based on those instrumental variables. Okay, so this is just an uh, illustrative example to, to gain some intuition, but uh, to understand that how does this uh, work and why these instruments works, we then need to dive a little bit in the, more, in the theory of the instrumental variables, which will be then the topic of the, the next lesson. So thanks for your attention and uh, we'll continue then on the theory.